Have you ever wondered what possibilities we could unlock if we could harness the sun's energy? I don't mean solar panels, which only catch the light that actually makes its way all the way to Earth, but what if we could harness energy at the source, at the center of the sun? Well, that's fusion, and we just got one step closer. Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Miles. We're separating science fiction from science fact. This is the news at Ben. A recent breakthrough at the National Ignition Facility, the NIF, an advanced laser and nuclear research institution in the USA, has brought this prospect of overcoming the technical milestones required for nuclear fusion finally within sight. The NIF, as well as ensuring the security of the US's nuclear weapon stockpile, are experimenting with the world's most powerful laser system, with the goal of achieving ignition a state whereby a nuclear fusion reaction becomes self-sustaining, where the amount of energy in is less than the amount of energy out, unlocking the ultimate energy source. In this instance, achieving ignition means the fusion process outputting greater than 1.9 megajoules needed to power the laser system. An experiment conducted at NIF on the 8th of August returned a fusion yield of 1.35 megajoules, that's 70% of the energy required for ignition. Historically, nuclear energy reactors have created power through fission, breaking heavy but unstable nuclei apart by firing neutrons at them to produce lower mass fragments at faster speeds. Typically, uranium and plutonium are used, which have the downside of producing radioactive waste as a byproduct of the reaction. Fusion, instead of splitting atomic nuclei apart, forces them together and actually creates orders of magnitude more power than fission per kilogram of fuel that's used. Also has the benefit of not requiring dangerous nuclear fuels or producing radioactive waste as a byproduct. Fusion is the process that powers the sun, and the fuel source that it uses is hydrogen, one of the most common elements in the universe. However, at the moment, we still have a couple of minor technical difficulties to overcome. Fusion for now only occurs in the center of stars, where the pressure and temperature is sufficiently high to drive these atoms together. This means that if we want to recreate fusion here on Earth, we need to recreate those conditions that exist in the center of the sun. That's what researchers are doing at the National Ignition Facility. In a process called inertial confinement fusion, which is best described as blowing something up before it blows up, 192 laser beams are concentrated onto a tiny pea-sized pellet of hydrogen isotopes, deuterium and tritium. This superheats the outer shell of the pellet, causing it to abelate essentially exploding outward and turning into a fine plasma. This explosion of the outer shell creates an equal and opposite force on the inner core, compressing its density to hundreds of times of that of lead and igniting a fusion reaction at the very center. What you get essentially is a mini sun, obviously only lasts for a very short amount of time. This however represents a major milestone in the quest for fusion, putting ignition and net positive energy output tantalizingly close. Whilst we might not quite be at the point where we're opening champagne bottles just yet, there is absolutely reason to be optimistic. The impact of a working fusion reactor model could meet global energy demands that would both be permanent and profound. The greatest contribution to global energy emissions is our almost insatiable need for electricity, which much of the world achieves by burning dead dinosaurs. Our likelihood of achieving nuclear fusion is hopefully going to benefit from the advances that are happening in tangentially related fields. Things like quantum computing, AI, superconducting magnets, and advanced materials could all have a role to play in accelerating our journey towards a viable fusion technology. This is because major advances in technology can have ripple effects across many different disciplines and fields of research. The advent of the internet is an obvious example of how a breakthrough in one area can revolutionize many. Whilst fusion reactors offer profound potential, the tremendous costs are a huge stumbling block at the moment to most investors as well as most governments. However, making a zero emission technology is of absolutely the highest priority, which has prompted quite a lot of philanthropic billionaires, philanthropic and in inverted commas billionaires, such as General Fusion, which is partly funded by Jeff Bezos and the Commonwealth Fusion Systems, uh, which I think is backed by Bill Gates. So these technologies are starting to pick up real commercial potential, commercial interest. Uh, and in fact, there are many companies working globally on viable fusion. The NIF is one of those institutes uh, and inertial confinement fusion is one of those approaches. Whilst we might not be quite there yet, fusion technology is one of the most exciting and quickly advancing fields of modern science. Fusion reactors one day may power our cities, our homes, our hospitals. They may one day scale down to the point where they can power our cars, our aircraft, 
even our spacecraft. The NIF's breakthrough brings us one step closer to that dream. If you're interested in other science breakthroughs that are making an impact on our lives, check out this playlist here. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.